Joining us here at Post 9 is Goldman Sachs Chief Economist Jan Hatzius. Talk about his reaction to the number. It's great to have you, Jan. Welcome back. It's very good to be here. Thank um, you. Slowing slower, right? S slowing slowly, I guess, is the, is the theme that we continue to wrestle with. What, yes, think? I think it's slowing gradually as far as employment growth is concerned. Slowed a little bit more than expected, but that's the, the trend. However, still with an unemployment rate that is very close to the sort of 3.5% level that we've seen for well over a year at this point. So this report to me seems very consistent with a soft landing in the labor market. Does it, does it make you worry about labor supply topping out? No, because I think labor demand is also decelerating. So uh, to me, this looks uh, like it's uh, still quite consistent with a you know, gradual kind of uh, uh, stabilization in the unemployment rate somewhere below 4% with signs of inflation decelerating. Admittedly, in this report, average hourly earnings growth was somewhat stronger. But I think if you look at all of the different indicators, we're still on track for a gradual inflation uh, slowdown. Still uh, wages growing fast enough to, um, to make a, a, a hike in July legitimate? Well, I think a hike in July is very, very likely, just given the signals that we've seen and the fact that the economy is still pretty solid. I mean, second quarter GDP is tracking uh, you know, above 2%. This report, while a little weaker than expected, still showing more than 200,000 new jobs, decline in the unemployment rate. All of that, I think, points to another move, given what they've said. September, I think, is less likely uh, because they've effectively told us that they've moved to a once every other meeting move. So November then is, a, is going to be a discussion again. And I think that's a live meeting, but that's going to depend on the data. What do you think in the data would make them stop hiking altogether? I mean, slowing slowly, is that enough? Well, yes, I think it, uh, it will be enough. It won't be enough for July. I think it will be enough if you go beyond that, if, if things gradually decelerate. What they will want to see is the funds rate at a sufficiently restrictive level where they can then hold it uh, if, and watch inflation come down much closer to their target. But that's a question of timing. I mean, for, for them to change their plan, their likely plan of hiking in the, in the near term at the July meeting, you'd have to see something much more dramatic, and we're not seeing that. Where do you come down on this idea of, uh, of the lag effects uh, for the broad economy uh, at this point? It seems as if pe people who have been really anticipating a recession to be more in imminent have said, okay, all these X factors have elongated this process, but we still have leading indicators where they are. The yield curve, you want to believe it or not, it's still firmly inverted. Uh, what does it say to you? Well, I think the lag between rate hikes or monetary policy tightening and the maximum impact on economic growth isn't that long. Mm -hmm. By our estimates, and frankly, this is consistent with the academic evidence that we've looked at, it's only about two quarters, two to three quarters mm -hmm. maybe. But I think the biggest drag from the very rapid 75 basis point per meeting moves of 2022 the biggest drag is behind us. And yeah. you can see it very clearly in the housing market. I mean, housing in the second half of last year subtracted almost one and a half percentage points from real GDP growth. But now housing is clearly stabilizing and there's a discussion about whether, you know, we see a rebound. That uh, will, you know, we'll, we'll need to see whether that actually materializes. But we're certainly not seeing the sort of declines and the sort of drag on growth that we had late last year.